make known the wedding, the Prophet also said, the distinction between what is permissible and forbidden in marriage is the playing of the bangle tambourine or hand drum. And, or the hand drum and the voice singing. After the consummation of my marriage, the Prophet came and sat on my bed as far from me as you are now sitting. Our young girls started beating their hand drum and singing chants about our fathers who died at Badr. One of them then said, in our midst is a prophet who knows what will happen tomorrow. The prophet told her, leave that statement and say what you were saying. The sunnah is that if someone marries a virgin while already married to a non-virgin, he will stay with the new wife for seven days and then distribute his time among his wives. If the new wife is a non-virgin, he will stay with her for three days and then distribute his time among his wives this is a abu this is what abu kilaba has narrated from anas abu kilaba further said if i will so i can also add the fact that anas related this from the prophet it is obligatory upon the husband to treat his wife well and to try to please her concerning matters that Allah has made permissible for her, especially if she is still young in age. On this point, there are numerous hadith. For example, the Prophet said, the best, of, the best of you is the one who is best to his family wife, and I am the best of you to my family. The Prophet also said the believers with the most complete faith are the ones with the best behavior and the best of you is the one who treats his wives with the best manners. The Messenger of Allah also said a believing man should never hate a believing woman. If he dislikes one of her characteristics, he will be pleased with another of her characteristics. During his speech of his farewell pilgrimage, the Prophet said, Verily, I advise you to treat women well. They are like prisoners under your authority. You have no rights over them other than that, unless they came, to a, came with a clear illicit act. If they do that, then avoid them in their beds and beat them in a non-violent manner. If, then, if they then obey you, do not seek any means of regress against them. Truly, you have rights over your wives, and your wives have rights over you. As for your rights over your wives, they are that they do not allow anyone to come to your seating that you dislike and that they do not allow anyone into your houses that you dislike and their rights over you are that you treat them kindly with respect to their clothing and food. If if a man has more than one wife, it is obligatory upon him to be just and equitable to them with respect to food, housing, clothing, spending nights with them and any other material issues. If he shows favour to one over the others, he will be falling under the warning set out by the Prophet in the following hadith. Whoever has two has two wives and shows favoritism to one of them will come on the day of judgment with one of his sides hanging down. However, there is no sin if he any lines to one in his heart only. This is something that he cannot control. Thus Allah has said, 
you will never be able to do perfect justice between wives even if it is your ardent desire so do not incline too much to one of them by giving her more of your time and provision so as to leave the other hanging neither divorced nor married the messenger of allah used to be just and equitable to his wives concerning material matters not preferring not preferring anyone over the others however even though aisha was still his most beloved wife narrated that uh, that the prophet sent him at the head of an expedition uh, that to dat as he came to the prophet and said what person is most beloved to you the prophet replied aisha he then asked among the men he then replied her father amr then asked then one he said then amr ibn al-khattab and he mentioned a number of men how many women can a free man marry it is not permissible to mar- to be married to be to more than four wives allah said